Wednesday night we talked about making sacrifices for God since it was Ash Wednesday going into Lent, uh, going into Easter. So today I want to talk about walking in obedience with God. Because if we are going to make sacrifices to God, then we're going to have to learn to walk in obedience with God. Now, if you make a sacrifice to God, which is giving something up for God, giving something up for the Lord, then we're going to have to rely on God to help us get through these times of temptation whenever the enemy tries to try to get us to go back to those things. As a matter of fact, when I think about giving, doing something for the Lord, as I say many times when we do something for God, those temptations will rise up to try to get you to stop doing those things. So the, the first thing I thought of was Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 when he just fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, he was fasting for God the Father. He was, he was doing something for, for God. And then what happens? Well, here comes the enemy and he tries to tempt Jesus out of God's will, what he was doing for the Lord. Not only was he trying to tempt him, but what did he tempt him with? The very thing that he was trying to do for God the Father. He was fasting. So he said, turn those stones into bread. So you can see how the enemy, you know, when we try to do things for the Lord and we're trying, and we make a sacrifice to God, when we try to give something up for God, the enemy will try to tempt us to go back to do those things again because it pulls us away from what we're trying to do for, for God the Father. So if we're, going to, if we're going to make a sacrifice to God, we're going to have to learn how to walk in obedience with God. So that's one of the first things I thought about when I was thinking of how, how, how we will start being tempted to go back to those things. Now, if we're going to be obedient to God, if we're going to try to make a sacrifice to the Lord, give something up to God the Father, then and we have to learn how to be obedient. We're going to have to learn to trust God. We're going to have to learn to, when God says to do something, learn how to trust and know that what God says is what's best for us. So I think, you know, sometimes we, whenever we're, we're, we're getting our walk with the Lord or, or we're making a sacrifice to God and we're trying to to be in God's will and we're being tempted away, we're learning how to be obedient, not to give in to those temptations. We're going to have to learn also to trust God, that God does know what's best for us, that God has the best plan for our life. Because sometimes I think we try to we try to insert ourselves and we think, well, you know, this isn't making a lot of sense, but if I do this, it makes more sense. Remove ourselves from it. Remove, and we're going to see some scriptures of just trusting in the Lord with all of our heart. Remove ourselves from the situation and just be obedient to God. So I want to just touch on a couple of uh, scriptures before we go any further. Talking about uh, obedience, talking about uh, being tempted and not giving in to that temptation, I want to look at 1 Corinthians 10.13. As I was saying, whenever, whenever you... Just as an example, but whenever you try to give something up for the Lord, you make that sacrifice, you tell the Lord, I really want to quit doing this thing and, and sacrifice this for you so you can get closer to God and those temptations arise to go back to it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, There has no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So just know that anytime you're being tempted uh, to go back to whatever it is that you made a sacrifice, and, and I'm just using a sacrifice as an example. It, it can be anything in your life that you're being tempted with. Just remember that when you're being tempted, God said he will give you a way out. As long as you're being tempted, and you know sin does not happen when we're tempted, we don't sin against God because we're tempted. Because we're all tempted. We saw the scriptures in Matthew chapter 4 where Satan tried to tempt Jesus. That wasn't the sin. The sin is when we give in to that temptation. So we're going to be tempted all the time. But what do we do with that temptation? And God is saying that when you are tempted, He will give you a way out. He will make it... He will make it to where you can bear that temptation. 
I think the problem is a lot of Christians, they, they uh, maybe they really don't want to give up that temptation. That when you're being tempted with something, if you make that sacrifice, if you're giving something up for the Lord and then you're tempted with it, we know we're being convicted. We know that the Holy Spirit in us is saying, oh, wait a minute, don't, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't give in to that. Now, are we going to trust God? Are we going to continue to look to God and know that God will get us through that temptation as the scripture says? Or as a Christian, do we act like, act like that we want to get through that temptation when deep down in our heart we really don't? But it makes us feel better if we just act like the... You know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm saying. And so does God. God is saying, you will not be tempted more than what you can handle. So, that's why the psalmist said, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's why whenever you're being tempted and you look to God, God will, all, yeah, I'll tell you, He'll just, the Holy Spirit will just bring all these scriptures to your mind. He'll bring the sermons to your mind. He'll bring the, the, the Bible studies that you have at home. He'll bring them to your mind. And that you can speak those words over that temptation. And that's how you're going to get through those temptations is through God's Word. But see, if we don't go to church, if we're not having Bible study, if we're not in the Word and we're not hiding that in our heart, then the Holy Spirit has nothing to bring to our remembrance. So we have to do our part too. But just know, just know if you truly want to get close to God, if you truly want to serve the Lord, if you truly want to have that relationship with God, if you truly want to be blessed and, and taste the goodness of God, just know that God said you can overcome any temptation that you're faced with. That He will make it to where you can bear anything that's set before you. And another scripture I want to share talking about just trust in God. Trust and I'm going to get into it a little bit later in the message, but how many times does God tell us to do something and it just makes absolutely no sense? I mean, we don't understand. Why would God have me do that? This is where we have to know. Just trust the Lord. Just know that God is going to take care of you. Just know that God is directing you in the right path. As long as you know it's God speaking to you and directing your path, just trust and obey and it says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. So just trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't try to understand why God is having you do something that just don't make any sense. Don't tr Listen, we're not going to understand it. We're not going to understand. And we're going to look at an example coming up in Joshua makes absolutely no sense. Uh, walk around the city. And you can walk around the city. And on the seventh day, walk around the city seven times. Don't say nothing, but start shouting on the seventh day when the trump. I mean, it makes no sense. But they did it. And because they did it, God was faithful in doing what he said would happen. So when God tells you to do something and it makes no sense, just trust and obey. God's up to something. Just trust and obey and know that He's going to lead you in the right direction. So, since we're talking about making sacrifices, and today we're talking about obedience, listen to this scripture that God pointed out to me as I began to write this message. And we see it in 1 Samuel 15, 22. This was, a, this was actually a scripture that... The Lord just had me turn to it. And it says in 1 Samuel 15, 22, it says, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than to sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. So we know how important it is to God for sacrifices. We see it throughout God's Word, making sacrifices to God. 
this is the time of year we're supposed to make sacrifices to God leading up to Easter, doing, getting, doing whatever it takes to get closer to the Lord as we lead up to Easter. In fact, when we talk about sacrifices, God made the biggest sacrifice for us when He gave us His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for the sin of the world on that cross. So, so God is very... When it comes to sacrifices, it is very important to God. But... This scripture here tells us that to be obedient to God is even more important. And so as I saw that scripture and I was writing this message, I, I began to wonder why, why, is, why is obedience more important to God than sacrifice? And this is what the Lord said to me. The Holy Spirit said, Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. And we see this in Luke 19.10. The Holy Spirit said, God gave us His Son to die for the sacrifice of our sin. And we see this in John 3.16. So Jesus came to seek and to save. And God gave His Son for the final sacrifice of our sin. Now, the Lord shows me Hebrews 10.26 which is the next scripture I want to turn to. Hebrews 10.26 says, If we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of truth, there remains no more sacrifice for our sin. So if you taste the goodness of God, if you give your life to the Lord, if you've been born again and saved, and then you begin to sin again, the Bible says there's, there's no more sacrifice. There's not, listen, there's nothing more that God can do. Now, God is waiting for you to turn back to Him and repent of those sins, and He's waiting with open arms. But as far as sacrifices, there, there's nothing more that God can do. When you accept that gift of salvation, when you accept God into your life, after that, there, there's really nothing more that God can do. It's up to us to learn to be obedient to God's Word. And that's why the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. When you truly give your life to the Lord, you should start to see old things pass away and all things become new. You're going to see a change in your life. You're going to love doing the things for the Lord that God puts on your heart. You're going to love going to church. You're going to love getting in the book, uh, uh, into the Bible. You're going to love having Bible study. You're going to love having a prayer. You're going to love everything that has to do with God because you become a new creation, a new creature. But sadly enough, over time, sometimes Christians turn from that and they, and they start allowing sin. After we've tasted the goodness of God, after knowing that God made that final sacrifice for us, His Son, Jesus Christ, after that there is no more sacrifice. So we have to learn to be obedient. We have to learn to walk in obedience with God. I want to... I want to share an example of obedience in God's Word and and, uh, you know, it's funny because when I first started this message, I knew that the Lord had, was going to have me talk about walking in obedience. So I come up with, I, I have four examples, and I, short examples of, of men in the Bible, people in the Bible that were obedient uh, to God. But as the sermon went on, I, I realized, well, God just has this one that he wants to share, and it's in, it's in Joshua. Uh, I'll tell you, Joshua chapter 6 is a very good chapter to have a Bible study at home. and just It's a good Bible study chapter. I'm not going to get in, you know, it would take a whole hour to really get into that chapter, but I just want to touch on a few things in this chapter. Um, but I want to look at Joshua. Now we see Joshua was a man that was made a leader of Israel after the death of Moses. God chose Joshua to be a leader because Joshua was faithful, because he was trustworthy, and because he was obedient to every command that God had for him. So because of that, God made him the leader of Israel after Moses. 
Now, when we look at Jericho, the Bible says that Jericho was a city, it was a state that it had to go, it had to, it had to be taken out because it was full of paganism, it was full of false religion, it was false gods. People were, were serving uh, untrue gods, and it was a place of, where they worshipped uh, the paganism, uh, false teaching. So, so God had to have it removed. Now, imagine... Because of a man named Joshua, and he, and he was obedient to God, God chose this man, Joshua, to lead this battle against Jericho because of his faithfulness. I tell you, whenever we show God that we're obedient, when we show God that we truly want to serve Him, when we show God that we truly want to just be close and be obedient to every word that He says, I tell you, God will just do mighty things in your life. He will show you mighty things. He will use you in mighty ways. And because this man, Joshua, because he was obedient and faithful to God, God used him as a leader. Now Joshua already proved himself to God that he was obedient to every command. So God knew that Joshua would be obedient to what he was told to do against Jericho. God gave very specific instructions to Joshua. I don't want to get into a whole bunch of them, but just, just a couple of examples of very specific instructions. He, he, he told Joshua that seven priests would walk around this city for six days, once a day, and on the seventh day, seven. On the seventh day, they would blow their, blow their trumpets, but he said they'd walk around with these, with these trumpets. Very specific. Six days, once walking around on the seventh, seven times, and then blowing the horn, blowing the trumpet. Another very specific command that God gave to Joshua was nobody is to say a word. Nobody is to utter a word out of their mouth. Well, that right there is a miracle. I mean, come on. Nobody say a word? That right there is a miracle. Very specific commands by God. But on the seventh day, after the seventh time, and they blow the horns, God said they will shout. Very specific, and there's more examples in, in that chapter 6, and there's more examples of very specific things. Well, when God told Noah to build the ark, there was very specific how to build it, exactly the dimensions, where to put everything, what to do. It didn't make any, once again, it didn't make any sense. Build an ark in a dry place? I mean, come on. Can you imagine what people were saying? But he was faithful. He was obedient. He moved with fear. And because of that, he and his family were saved. He was obedient. So Joshua, he did everything that the Lord told him to do. Now, you, like I said, you can read this in Joshua chapter 6. But right now, I want to look at Joshua 6, through, uh, 6, 3 through 5. And this kind of touches on what we've already talked about. It says, You shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. You shall do this six times. Six days. Once six days. Seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and on the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So Joshua, these, these commands were given to Joshua. Joshua, and God knew because of his faithfulness in the past, his obedience in the past, God knew when he spoke these things to Joshua that Joshua would be obedient to make sure that these things happened. So Joshua went to the people and commanded the people to do these very things. Because of his obedience, the walls of Jericho came down that seventh day when they blew the trumpets after the seventh time around and the people shouted. But God showed me something else right here. As I was studying this again this morning, the, the Lord spoke to me and showed me something else. Joshua was obedient, as we know. 
God chose him to be a leader because God knew that he would be obedient during this time of Jericho. We talk about how because of his obedience and they, he did everything that God said to do, the walls came down. But what the Lord said, said to me today was it wasn't just Joshua. The very people that God spoke to through Joshua, they all were obedient too. It wasn't just Joshua that was obedient that day. It was all of those people listening to Joshua because they knew that God was speaking through him. It's because of the obedience of Joshua speaking the commands of God and because the people took heed to what he was saying, because they all were faithful together and obedient to God. That's why those walls came down. It wasn't just Joshua. It was all of God's people. Let me tell you something. When God tells our church to do something and we're obedient to it, we're going to see great things happen. And it isn't just the pastor. It's all of us. It's all of us together doing God's work. And that's how we're going to see great things happen through this church and this ministry. So this, like I said, this is a great chapter to do a Bible study on at home. But what I want to focus on today is obedience. God chose Joshua because he proved himself to be obedient in the past. God knew that he would be obedient to the process of taking down Jericho. And because of that obedience being carried out once again, the city of Jericho would be destroyed. They overtook it, it was destroyed. Once again, I just want to remind us that when God tells us to do something, you may, it may not make any sense to us. But if you know that God is telling you to do something, just be obedient to what God is saying. And I promise you, if God is speaking to you, and it makes absolutely no sense, if you're obedient, I promise you, you'll be blessed. I promise you that the day will come if you're obedient to God, the day will come when you look back and you say, man, it made absolutely no sense at the time, but I can see that only God did this. And you know why God does it that way? Because if it made sense to us, if God thought the way that we thought, you know what would happen? These things would happen? Well, if it, if it made sense to us in the flesh to walk around six days, and on the seventh day, do it seven times and then blow a horn and start shouting and you'll win. If that made sense to us, you know what would happen? We would walk around taking glory for it. Well, look what we did. Look what we... But you know what? When you, you know why God does things that makes absolutely no sense? Because when we look back, we have to say, only God could do that. And instead of giving ourselves glory, we give Him glory. We, listen, God created us for one thing, to praise and worship Him, to give Him glory while we're on this earth. That's why, he, that's why we're created on this earth, to do His will, to do His work, to glorify Him. So just remember, the next time God speaks to you, and it makes absolutely no sense, that's because God's fixing to do something great and mighty in your life. And you're going to look back and you're going to say, only God could do that. Now, listen to these scriptures about obeying God. In Deuteronomy 13.4, it says, Keep His commandments and obey His voice. In Acts 5.29, it says, We ought to obey God rather than man. And I tell you, that's a scripture we need to learn and remember. It is better to obey God than to obey man. It's better to put your trust in God than to put your trust in man also according to God's word. See, man will let us down. People will let us down. Man will lead us in the wrong direction. But if we allow God to lead us, well, Psalms 23 says he'll lead us to green pastures and still waters, which is a place where things are happening, growing, peace. But if we put our trust in man and let man lead us, we'll find ourselves in a world of trouble. In Romans 5.19, this scripture really kind of hits home also about obedience. Talking about doing the Lord's work and 
Romans 5.19 says, For as by one man's disobedience, many are made sinners. So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. Listen, God has you right where you need to be. You may not understand why you're at right now, why God would have you planted where you're at today, but God has you right where you need to be. The people around you, God has you planted there so you can be that light for them. Whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's co-workers, God has you exactly where you need to be. You are to let your light shine where, where you're at so those people around you can come to know Christ. Because of one man's disobedience to God. If, if you are right where you're at and you're complaining and griping because of where you're at right now, and you're being disobedient to God, that's causing people to stay in sin. For an example, we're having Darren come speak to us. If God spoke to him and said, I want you to go into prisons and preach, and he didn't want to do that, so he didn't do it, those people would still be in sin because of his disobedience. But because God spoke to him and said, go into the prisons and minister, because he is obedient, many people have become saved and given their life to the Lord because of one man's obedience. You see what I'm saying? So you are right where God wants you to be. But you have to let God work through you. You have to be obedient to God right where you're at. And let me tell you, when you show God that you're obedient right where you're at, maybe you don't want to be where you're at, but if you are faithful and obedient to God where you're at, where you don't want to be, God will promote you to another level. God will take you to the next step if you show obedience right where you're at. God will do things in your life. One man's disobedience will cause people to stay in sin. But one man's obedience will cause people to become righteous. And you know that righteous is only through Jesus Christ. There are so many examples in scriptures about obeying God. And I really do encourage everyone to have a Bible study at home on their own time to get into a Bible study on this topic of obedience. There's so much to learn. But as I close the message, I want us to ask ourselves these questions. Would God count you obedient as he did with Joshua? Because we saw that Joshua became a leader of Israel after Moses because God knew his obedience. Would God count you obedient? If God spoke to you, would he already know in his heart that you would obey what he's going to say because of your past? Have you already shown God in the past that when God speaks to you that you will be obedient? Does he already know? Could God count on you to be a leader for him because he knows that you would obey his every direction like you did with Joshua? And I'll tell you one thing that Joshua didn't do when God promoted him to be a leader over Israel. He didn't walk around talking about his new title. He didn't walk around bragging about who he was as a leader. He didn't walk around talking about being a leader of Israel. What he did do was listen and obey God. He allowed God to direct every step that he took. See, some people, when they get a, when they get a promotion, they, they like to brag and talk, and they like to kind of use their authority to push people around. and they like, you know, they, He didn't do that. He just allowed God to lead and direct his steps. If you have answered no to any of those questions about obedience, the good news is today you can change all that. You can make a decision, like we, I think it was Wednesday night we talked about uh, the altar and making sacrifices to God being obedient, uh, but, but you can make a decision to say, you know what, Lord, I, I know I haven't been real obedient in the past. I know that I haven't really trusted uh, the direction that you were taking me. I, I, I know I got off course. 
And you can make a decision today to say, but you know what, Lord, I, I just, I'm just going to ask that you would help me to be obedient today, to, to help me get closer to you, to, to show me what you have for my life. I tell you, anytime, anytime you pray to God and you're telling the Lord that you want to get closer to Him and that you want God to use you and to show you great and mighty things in your life, I tell you, God loves to hear them kind of prayers. And I'm telling you, He will answer those prayers and He will show you. Jeremiah 33 says, Call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. When you call upon the Lord, God will show you things. God will take, take you places you never even dreamed of because of your obedience, because you're wanting to get close to God. So during this time that we're supposed to be making sacrifices to the Lord, we've we got to remember in order to make sacrifices to God, in order to give things up to the Lord, we also have to be obedient. Because without obedience, none of it really matters. None of it really matters without obedience. Because when we're not obedient and, and we're letting sin come into our life, or we're kind of throwing it all away because we're not, we don't have that relationship with God. So you have to have an obedience in your life. You have to show God that you want to serve Him, that you want to live for Him, that you, that you want to get close to Him. And, and, and of course, as I said earlier, just remember that any time that you try to give some, and I'm not talking just about this time of year, just because we're going into Easter, I'm not talking about just, I'm talking any time throughout the year, any time you make a sacrifice to God, any time you make a vow to God that says, Lord, I'm going to give this up for you, I'm going to do this for you, it doesn't matter what time of year it is, but any time you make a sacrifice to God, the enemy is going to try to tempt you to go back to it. Because he don't want to see you doing things for God the Father. So just keep that in mind and know that when that happens, look to God, trust God, start speaking God's word over that temptation, and you can overcome anything that's put before you. So with that said, I'm going to ask that you bow your heads, close your eyes. Uh, I want to pray with those on the online ministry first. And if you have anything that you would like to pray about today, you'll have an opportunity uh, after this. We'll have a song of invitation. But if you're watching online today and, and you've never given your life to the Lord, that's your first step to, to, to learning what that obedience in God is, to knowing uh, exactly what God can do in your life. And if you'll follow me in this simple prayer, it, Father, I come to you today. I know that you died for the sin of the world. I know that you arose on the third day. And today, I ask that you forgive me of my sin to come into my heart, to be my personal Savior, to lead me, to guide me from this day forth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The Bible says if you prayed that simple prayer, that you've been born again. And if you'll contact us, we'll help you find a church in your area.